we've always hated dealing with data sheets and the fact that all of the data sheets are so different. Every manufacturer will write things and explain things differently. That is a problem that engineer then has to go through hundreds and hundreds of pages trying to copy out registers or rely on the driver being provided, which in most situations it's not. And if you can find something open source, it's pretty bad quality. You can't really rely on it. We are building an industry standard on how you describe a semiconductor on a software level. We build models for different chip classes that incorporate all of the data points that you need to bring chip into your product on the software side. We then use AI to retrieve that information from actual chip data sheets into our model, meaning that suddenly we have stabilized machine-readable representation of a component uh, that can be used for code generation, testing, documentation generation. The whole journey of bringing up low-level electronics becoming a lot more streamlined. Right now we support bare metal, TMCS, Zephyr. We're expanding that scope. And also we are able to bring up a component on a dev board of your choice within a few clicks. So there are over 600 dev boards supported by the system. When you upload the data sheet into the system, we pull in a data representation. So let's say an empty structure of all of the data points you need for software integration. We then retrieve information we can find using AI into that model. That's where AI ends within our system. We don't use AI to generate code. We only do use it for data retrieval. We do a lot of pre and post processing of data, but also we provide you with tooling to navigate errors if they occur in the system within the platform where you can track if the error occurred or warnings that might have been flagged up where a system might have been incorrect. But the important part is you are dealing with very structured visual representation of a chip that you can quickly cross-check with data sheet because everything is backlinked and you have, can have a side-by-side -side view. The way that the system works is you upload a data sheet into it. So you just click upload data sheet, select the data sheet you want to process. So here on my table, I have this ADXL345 connected to Renaissance board. So I just find it here, select the PDF and upload it. What we do is the back is exactly converting that PDF into our digital twin array component taking the data from the PDF into our model. So if the component's been processed by the system previously, we'll just pull it from an existing database. If it's a component that we are seeing for the first time, it might take anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes. But you'll get an email notification when it's done. So here we have the ADXL now. I'll open the PDF that we uploaded and also the system configuration. What we transformed it into is that digital twin configuration. You have everything from the device name, vendor, class, interfaces it supports. It gives you the addresses. It can be connected to on ISPR C bus. It gives you possible frequencies that will support the register address size. It gives you all the register mapping extracted for you as well. So for every register, you have name, address, size. But if you open it up, you also have full info and access, bit allocations on every bit. You can click on it, see associated values and descriptions, and all of it is editable as well. So if I want to just drag this and create an additional reserved offset, I'm able to do that. So you as a developer hold full control. And if you want to change anything, let's say I'll change it to 16, you can do that. But as discussed about hallucinations and error and warning tracking, it will tell you that there is a warning. And if you'll click on it, it will tell you register size looks inconsistent, please check. The way you can check it is you can click on PDF, turn on the backlink mode, and just see where in data sheet that information is contained and cross-check that. For this example, the first thing you want to do is you want to bring it up. You want to see, is it actually working, that component, or do I need to look for other options? So you can go to Setup and put together an initialization sequence. We give you a narrative. It's an instruction on how to start up that particular chip that we retrieve from the data sheet. Okay, so you'll say, for example, here, that to start measurement, send the measure bit D3 in the power control register. And the way you can do it here, you can just click add register, select the register you want to configure, so power control, open it, find the measure field, and just change the setting into measurement mode. And we will calculate your register value automatically for you. If it's very straightforward, you can start 
and try and start testing. You can just try to bring it up. And if it doesn't work, then you can start exploring. Then I can look at a data sheet and figure yeah. it out. <laughs> you can do formulas. So let's say here, in this case of ADXL, I already know that I need to combine registers. So there is a high and low byte that I need to combine for all of the accesses. So but for example, I can create a combined register X axis and just put together two data points, X1 and X0, into here and save it. Same for formulas. I can create a formula for X axis and I can insert registers, which could be this combined register we created and apply a um, sensitivity coefficient. You'll be able to get a final value reading from that register instead of running additional post-processing of raw data uh, uh, on sort of further stages. So you can save that, and then you can just click Generate Testing. And here, a testing environment pop-ups where we can select the target. In this case, a microcontroller dev kit for Renesas. Could be ST, could be NXP, anything else you are developing on. So we are agnostic to that. Okay. Just that you need to find it in the list. So what I'll do, I'll just type array 8, and I'll click that. And if I click get firmware, a firmware package will be generated for you. That's it's going to build you a BSP with that component integrated. You flash it. We are building an in-product flasher. So you won't even need to use JLink or SD. But right now you do. You select your data exchange frequency. Importantly, you plug in the board. So we need to wire it in, I connect it, and now if I click connect, select the serial port, connect it. It scanned all of the available buses, it identified where the device sits, on which specific address. Now I can go to time series, for example, and select that formula we've created on x-axis, and it'll give me live readings on that. So, We've been able to bring up and get live data from a chip that we've never sort of dealt with before. We just had a data sheet, quickly configured it, and it's live now. And if you are happy with the way it performs, you can go back. Let's disconnect this. And then you can go to project options, select where you want to integrate that device into your hall architecture. Let's say CMSYS. Click generate and driver. And now, what will happen is we'll generate you a driver library that will be CMCS compatible based on the configuration that you've already tested. So here, and that's when I mentioned deterministic code generation, there is no AI in this. So you always have stable output. All of the data type headers, for example, an endless piece of a with documentation. And we can generate you a Doxygen compatible docs already with HTML and all of the packs and PDF. So you can get this whole set in included in this from your, let's say, CMSYS implementation. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward, readme's and everything. And the beauty of it is that six months in, you need to use the same part. You already know the configuration you want to use. You can go back to it, say, hey, actually, now I need a Zephyr driver because we are migrating. You click on it, and you get Zephyr driver with kconfigs, YAML files, Right now, we focused on sort of prototyping and system decision um, part of development, where people need to quickly bring up components, test them, ensure that they are um, ensure that they are working for them, and then bring them into the project. Moving forward, we'll not just facilitate, let's say, a bare metal simple driver, but we'll facilitate a driver that compliant to functional safety, for example. Whether that means you know being ISO 26262 compatible, which required some traceability to source, etc., but sort of a fuller package. Ultimately, getting to the BSP. My goal is to truly enable software-defined embedded development, meaning that the application is the king. Everything that happens from the underlying hardware interaction should be resolved with tooling like ours, our tooling, uh, ideally. So what I want to do is I can allow people to put together for prototyping functional diagrams of systems of what they want to put together. Uh, we will generate them BSP so they can test it on their racks and then connect to their 
circuit board design tooling like say Altern, so that we can pull out the final designs, all of the pin eyes, have things connected, and generate a full-on BSP for the HAL architecture of their choice. And the beauty of it is that if you're an electronics engineer who is trying to do functional testing, you don't need to worry about code, which you might not like that much. No. You don't need to rely on I the I don't need to know key. the implementation. I just exactly. need to know that the, the board is functional. Yeah. And we've spent on previous projects like weeks just verifying that a board does what it's meant to do, but we're not the ones implementing any of the code. We just need to tell the embedded software guys that, you know, this board functions, you can use yeah. it for development. And then the interesting thing that we've figured out is that instead of sending an Excel spreadsheet of, I don't know, bus configurations or registers or anything else on that side, you can effectively just send them this config and they will generate the driver they need them. You as an electronics engineer don't need to deal with any code whatsoever. You just do your part of the workflow and you pass on the source of proof digital twin onto the next team.